Welcome back to another episode of the Packs What She Said podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Maggie Loney, joined as always by Perry Goldstein. Remember, you can find the show on Spotify. Please support the show if you love what we're doing. Also on YouTube, like and subscribe there for us as well. Perry, at least we get to talk about a Packers win. Packers beat the Rams in L.A., their first win in L.A. since the 1960s. Very cool. 24 to 19. And now they're home on Sunday to play another NFC West team. But we'll talk about that later. What were your initial thoughts after this one? This team is frustrating. <laughs> yes. Like, yes, it was a win. Um it wasn't a statement win, which I think is what I was hoping for out of this game. So, yes, we can take a win. A win's a win. It goes in the win column. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters in the regular season. However, I really would have liked to see this team go to L.A., beat up on a very run-down, beat-down Rams team that is missing like pretty much everyone important on their roster, save for their quarterback. And that's just not what happened. And... um I don't know. We can get into it later in the episode. I know we will in our rundown here, but like, are we worried? Are we, is this like a long-term issue? Like how effective do we think they are? Were our expectations too high going into this season? Like where, what's like our temperature check five weeks into the season? Um, But it was a win. There were plenty of positives, which we will also get into. Um, Just like, it didn't feel good as a win. Yeah. And I think, you know, taking a temperature check is really interesting. Leave us some comments, leave us some tweets um, on your own perspectives on this, because I think to me, three and two is what matters, right? It's frustrating. The two of your losses were against NFC teams. They were against good NFC teams. And I think what makes it more frustrating is that this is a Packers team that continues to find ways to beat themselves And that's why the Rams game was frustrating because it should have ended 31 to 12 right around there, like 31 to 14. It shouldn't have been the kind of game that it was. Jordan Love throws a pick six. The Packers take an eight minute drive and don't score any points in the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden the Rams are right back into it. And I think that's what makes this team so frustrating is because if you clean up a lot of those self-inflicted mistakes, they're a dominant football team. If your receivers, you know, are catching some balls that we expect them to catch drives are being sustained. If you clean up a couple penalties, like it's all right there. It's really close. And thankfully we're having this conversation in week five and not in week 15. And there's still plenty of season left for them to clean things up, but it's, it's a team that just still feels frustrating. And I think we kind of expected that with a new defensive coordinator, but the offensive struggles, I certainly wasn't expecting. And maybe it's, partially because Jordan Love's still working his way back, but the way that he's been practicing in full, you would expect more of this to be cleaned up than it has been. Yeah. I think without the pick six, Jordan had a really good day. Um, He did. Yeah. Just like a bonehead decision, just take the safety. Um, But, you know, you can't help when your receivers are dropping things. You can't, you know, there's some things that just unfortunately as a quarterback are, are actually out of rear control. Um, the ground game was doing its thing. It was fine. They had over a hundred yards on the ground um, split between Josh Jacobs and Emmanuel Wilson. And then a little bit of Jaden Reed sprinkled in there, you know, um, even Jordan Love got involved. I, I, I like it. W- it's hard to point to really like one thing, I guess, in terms of the offense. I'd actually like be curious if there's like something that you would particularly point to, because I don't, really know like I don't want to put it all on the drops like there's a few there and a few there like a Dontavian Wicks drop here and there but I like Tucker Craft looked great and Jaden Reed looks great and I don't know why they're stalling out and you you know we talked about it pre-show but their red zone efficiency was better they were abysmal on third down um I guess that could maybe be the thing that we point to in this game of like you can't be what is it one for eight on third down in this game, like that's just not going to sustain drives. Um, but I'm less worried about the offense. I, I think the offense is going to get there. They're going to get a little healthier. They're going to get their guys back. I see, you know, the Tucker craft breakout and like the Jaden Reed is already there. And um, we saw what they could do last season. And I have full faith in Matt LaFleur. Um, 
maybe our expectations were just too high going into the season because of the way that they ended their season. Like they ended this ended last season on such a high and they were such like an offensive juggernaut and things were clicking and Jordan looked so good. And so you expect it to just like pick up where they left off. And that's just not how things work, right? You take months off, guys look different. Everybody grows and evolves differently and change is not linear. And um, also now defenses have tape on them. And so you have to call things differently and they have new personnel. And so it's just not going to be the same and they're having to make adjustments. And now we're just watching those adjustments in real time. And they're maybe just not as seamless and pretty as we hoped they would be. Yeah. And I mean, I think that it was, you know, kind of an interesting situation for this Packers team. You know, we, we figured they'd be without Christian Watson. It sounds like he could potentially come back as early as the Cardinals game, which would be fantastic. Romeo Dobbs, the suspension was shocking and unexpected. You expected him to be a larger part of this offensive plan. And then he wasn't Luke Musgrave didn't play a snap was injured. So all of a sudden you think you have, you know, this arsenal and you're down to Jaden Reed and Ontavian Wicks and Tucker Craft. And while they all played well, it was evident, you know, Wicks had only two receptions on seven targets. Like some of that stuff is just, I don't know if it's like a pressure situation. I don't think so, but it's certainly one of those things that he himself is going to need to clean up if he wants to be the kind of piece of the offense that we expect him to be, because we know that he's a really talented football player. And I think the Packers are full of really high ceiling players that are still trying to meet their potential. So I think once the injuries, like you said, once we clear some of that up, Jair, hopefully back against the Cardinals, that would make a huge difference for the secondary. Um, Carrington Valentine coming back helped, but it's just, it's hard to get a beat, I think, on this team right now because everything is so in flux. So hopefully against the Cardinals, they clean some of those things up, but it's hard to come out here every week and say, well, there's things that they can clean up. They're self-inflicted because they can't afford to beat themselves against some of the teams they have coming up. And we'll talk about the Cardinals game, obviously, later this week, but a more formidable opponent than I think we were expecting before the season started another NFC team that they could see again in the playoffs. So this is when they really need to start cleaning up some of these mistakes. If they actually want to be the kind of playoff contender that we thought that they would be. Yeah. Just beat the 49ers. Um, NFC is wide open. So the Packers can really like take the bull by the horns right now. Um, Unfortunately, the raining, not raining, the, charging leader if we keep the bull metaphor is in their division which is unfortunate um it looks now that the nfc north is the division it is going to be the tough division this season unless things drastically change so the packers need to stay on top of it too um like we said at the top of the show a win's a win and wins in this division specifically are hella important um because they're fighting for their lives kind of with the Lions and the Vikings in the mix. Um, Something we talked about pre-show, which I want to get your thoughts on, are like the effectiveness of a win, you know, how they looked in this win. And we've kind of touched on it, but like, do we feel, I guess I should phrase this differently. Do we feel differently if about this game um, based on how close it was, do we, you know, we obviously wanted to see a more complimentary game. Um, they still did a lot of good, but, you know, we'll go through some of our positives, but like, how are you feeling post this win in that sense? I mean, I think the pressure's on at this point. I do still think the Packers are, Super Bowl contenders in the NFC. I think that everything is still right in front of them. I think that they're unfortunately a couple missed kicks away from being undefeated, but you could argue that they're a couple missed plays away from being two and three instead or one and four. So by that same token, you know, they're very fortunate to have the turnovers that they have and the, the differential and the defense that, you know, we talk about is incredibly volatile and we'll, we'll get there in the show, but I think that as they continue to clean some of this up, there's not really any reason to sound the alarm. And I still expect them to be a playoff team. 
but how far they run in the playoffs is going to be dependent on whether or not they do clean these things up, right? Because mm-hmm. we are waiting for the Vikings to come down to earth and that hasn't happened yet. The Lions were on a bye this week, so we don't really have a gauge on them. I'm not necessarily expecting the Bears to be a wild card contender just because the division is so stacked, but they're of course looking better earlier in the season than I think we expected. I think we thought the quarterback and the receivers would need a little bit more time to gel, which would maybe happen like mid season. So there's tough games coming up, right? It's the Cardinals, then it's the Texans, then it's the Jaguars, and then it's the Lions. Then you have your bye week, and then you play the Bears. So like, there's not really a, a moment to catch their breath and and sit back. And well, maybe the Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the Jaguars at that point. But yeah, I mean, like it's it's tough sledding the entirety yeah. of the season. Yeah. So I, which I think is good because I think this team needs to play good teams and to prove that they're a good team. And I still think they are. It's yes. just you know, they can't keep making simple mistakes and expecting to beat teams because the mistakes they made against the Rams, I'm not sure you win that game if it's against the Texans or the Lions. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know if you win that game if they have Cooper Cup or Puka Nakua, to be honest with you, Um, or like any of their starting. I mean, I guess it didn't matter. They had none of their starting uh, offensive linemen and they still couldn't get there. So let's, let's, let's segue then um, to that point to the defense because ugh, uh, is how <laughs> I feel at the moment. And, and I say this as someone who was very, you know, don't get too high in this defense before the start of the season, they have a new defensive coordinator. It might take some time for them to gel. And yet I'm still frustrated watching them because I feel like they should be playing better. And I don't know if that's a testament to the fact that I think their personnel is just better than what I'm seeing on the field. But then at the same time, you know, they still only held the Rams to 19 points and six of those came from their offense. Like Jordan Love handed the Rams six points, right? So really the defense only gave up 13 points. And like at the end of the day, that's a good day at the office. You win football games. Yeah. Right. For an NFL defense. So I don't know what it is about watching them that makes me so frustrated because Xavier McKinney has five interceptions in five games and they're, you know, they're making stops, but at the same time, it's just, it's not passing the sniff test for me. I think it's because of the volatility of turnovers and until the fumble we were like oh man the rams are doing whatever they want on offense and they're just you know they're they're marching up and down the field and then you have the turnover and the packers start putting up some points and the rams look like they're responding and xavier mckinney gets a pick and like Mm -hmm. those things i mean it's hard to say that you can't live by turnovers when the packers lead the league in turnover differential like they're clearly making it a part of their identity as a defense so to that extent it can be part of your identity but on the off chance you don't get a turnover it's like we talked about going into the vikings game if the packers just have to go toe-to-toe with an offense and they don't force a single single turnover can they win football games? And that's a question we haven't necessarily had to answer yet because Xavier McKinney exists and he's on the yeah. Packers roster. But, you know, that's that's the question. And I think what I appreciated about this defense was the opportunities that guys got. We saw Evan Williams out there. We saw Javon Bullard out there. When yeah. Jair comes back, I think there's a very clear five that you want as yeah. you're starting DBs. And it doesn't matter where you put them. You just want those five out there. Like, I think that's kind of what this game has shown. But... Yeah, Edge Cooper looks great. Yeah, like there's so much to be excited about. But the guys that you expect the biggest performances from are disappearing. And I think that's what's frustrating. And I think to your earlier point, right, it's like the Rams led in total yards 370 to the Packers 323. They led in passing yards 236 to the Packers 197. They led in rushing yards barely 134 to 126. Like, and yet somehow... You know, you come up with a big play when you need one, great. But to your point, it's like if you live and die by turnovers and you don't get one when you need one, you can't just let opposing offenses go down the field doing whatever they're going to do. You know, third and it's, you know, at the goal line. And it was, I think, Kyron Williams just walked right on in. There wasn't even like a stand. He just like hopped on over the goal line 
fourth and one and you you kind of know well they're going to convert this like they're they're just going to ram right in there there's no stand and it's been the same regardless of who's coordinating um let's talk again about the pass rush because once again now they did sack matthew stafford in this game okay three times yes they did um however it was edge cooper who is incredible yes I'm, he never. He needs to never leave the field. At this I'm point. in love with him. Like, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in love with him. Carl Brooks and Preston Smith. There is a name who has not been on the stat line in a number of weeks, and I feel as though, even though I love him, I love him to death. I am starting to be concerned about why Rashawn Gary is not doing anything. Yeah. And I think that's fair. And, you know, I know that, you know, the numbers kind of trickle out later and, you know, the, he was winning some of his reps and, you know, who was it that always used to say that, you know, pressures are just as meaningful as sacks. And that, that is fair to an extent, like generating pressure on the quarterback yeah. makes a difference, but we're talking about Matthew Stafford having all of the time in the world to find whoever he wanted. And it didn't matter that he was playing with his like fourth string receivers because nobody was near him. You know, you could take a screenshot of the field and he would just be in the frame by himself against a backup O-line. And that's really frustrating. And you look at like this Devonte Wyatt still leads the team in sacks. He wasn't out there. Ken Kenny Clark doesn't have a sack yet this season. Rashawn Gary I technically there was one. There was better interior pressure in this game for sure. Yes. Even if it didn't lead to a sack, like noticeably better. And Kenny was like getting in there. So mm -hmm. I will, I will give them that. But like you said, in a game where they're playing essentially with their backup O-line, like you should be absolutely like manhandling them and influencing the pocket. On top of the fact that you're not throwing to Matthew Stafford is not throwing to their top receivers. It's not like, you know, Sean McVay is working with their their best out there, their, you know, Super Bowl winning team, their potential, you know, offensive rookie of the year in Puka Nakua. Like, no, this is nobody's out there carving you up because Matthew Stafford has a million years to find them, to find guys wide open. Um, it's not working for me. <laughs> So this is maybe getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but we talked about a pre-show. Um, obviously, the trade deadline is November 5th. So yeah. about a month out still, packed set time. Do you think they would make a move? And would it be for a pass rusher, if anything? Because I think that's really the only area that you're looking to make like a, a wholesale improvement on this roster. And I'm sure in a month, there's plenty of time for the pass rush to get going. But you're you're five weeks in. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how much you can use a game like the Cardinals as a metric because their starting guard just suffered a season ending knee injury. So if you generate a pass rush, is it because there's a backup guard in there? You know, like it's really hard yeah. to get a gauge on what your pass rush looks like against bad offensive line play. I mean, I think at this point it's the only like glaring hole to me. And like, you're not really going to trade for a kicker. So <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I decide I'll side tangent that with like, Braden Narvinson went hundo hundo p hundo percent in mm -hmm. this game. So good bounce back game for 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 him. Um, I think that the Packers should be in like all in mode in whatever form or fashion that looks like for the Packers because that's not really their vibe. Um, but if that's what they want to do at the, at the deadline, um, if they're going to make a move, then yeah, that's what they would do in my opinion. Okay, so let's wrap this one up by talking about game balls. Players okay. that stand out, players that we want to get a little shout out to because there were, like you mentioned earlier, some very good individual performances in addition to a team win. So who gets a game ball from Perry? Um, well, 
we shouted out Xavier McKinney already. So let's like round out that combo with like Xavier McKinney. Hello. <laughs> the prince that was promised. Like literally the prince that was promised. Um, five interceptions, five games. Also just like playing like the star that we knew that he was when they signed him. Um, absolutely menacing. I love his attitude too. When he's asked about his play on the field, like you can tell that he's like, don't throw back here. Don't you dare throw back here. And Matthew Stafford was trying to bait him all game. I love that little like game of cat and mouse that was going on with them all game. And he got one off him. I almost got two. Almost had a second. Yeah. Yeah. Almost had two. He is not, um, he is not to be toyed with. And I think, you know, you see the kind of, you see the kind of game he's playing right now. And like, he should be seriously influencing game plans moving forward, which is a huge asset for the Packers, quite frankly. Yeah. And I mean, I think that as, as much as we questioned the Anthony Johnson Jr. Departure um, during roster cutdowns, seeing Javon Bullard and seeing Evan Williams, like you should have no other safeties in your rotation at that point. Like, Evan Williams and Javon Bullard, I think both get game balls Mm -hmm. for this one. Evan Williams, like what a debut for him. 10 total tackles, two passes defensed, the game saving, you know, pass defensed on fourth down. Really nice to see him get some looks on the field. And I like that they're interchangeable. I like that, you know, Javon Bullard doesn't have like a spot he's locked into and Williams doesn't have a spot he's locked into. They holistically make this defense better, the secondary better. And that's what we expect out of Jeff Hafley's defense. We thought that he was going to play a lot more man and get really physical. And Bullard and Williams are two really perfect fits for the style of defense that we expect out of Jeff Hafley. Yeah. I mean, what a total makeover in that room, right? Like, it's crazy how aggressive and um, ball hawking they all are. Um, my last game ball goes to Tucker. Number 85. I mean, he's been on the ascent for quite a while now, but just an immensely impressive game from him. I think for an offense that was struggling when you needed a big play, I mean, all season, quite frankly, but like when you need a big play, like Tucker is involved, whether he's blocking, whether he is chipping, whether he is doing anything, he's always there. And it really paid off in this game, right? He almost had a hundred yards four four catches, 88 um, and two touchdowns. And he's just like, he's hard to bring down. He's got like the best mentality. He's such a G like a G in every way, a homie and a Packer, just like, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Um, so, but in, in all seriousness, um, just like the well-rounded tight end that I think everyone hoped he would become when he got drafted in the third round. And he's developed way faster than expected for a third round pick. Yeah. And I mean, he's second on the team now in receptions, second on the team in yards and tied for team lead in touchdowns with three along with Reed and Wicks there as well. But yeah, just, you couldn't really ask for more out of him and hoping that Luke Musgrave, of course, takes that same kind of jump later this season. Once he's back to being healthy, would love to see them in more 12 personnel sets to get them both on the field at the same time. And, give Musgrave some more opportunities, but yeah, I think that Kraft is the tight end that we've been long awaiting as Packer fans and really fun to see him have such a big game on Sunday. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and give my last game ball to Braden Arvison. I think just because like you said, he was hundred percent. Those kind of games are needed for him. If they're going to build confidence first game, he didn't miss a kick in, you know, hopefully that is a trend in the right direction. And Hopefully he just continues to grow confidence because it's just going to get colder in Green yeah. Bay. And, you know, I don't know if that was any part of it was that it was inside in L.A. and it was nice out. But hopefully he can build on that because yeah. winter is coming Winter is coming. <laughs> and he's not going to have a good time if he can't <laughs> kick in the wind and the cold and the snow. But any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? Um. I think we covered everything, you know, wins a win. I'm really, really curious about this Arizona game. I think preseason, I felt very differently than I do currently. This Arizona team has 
totally turned it around very quickly. So I'm looking forward to talking about that with you later this week. So tune in to our preview show. Um, but hey, it's one in the win column. So we'll take it. Packers are three and two. Yeah, Packers are three and two in a very hotly contested NFC North and just NFC in general. Saints and Chiefs play in just a few minutes here. Um, so we'll see how the Saints fall because I think the NFC South has been really fun. The NFC East is fun with Jaden Daniels. Like so many teams really up in the air right now. The NFC West, wide open, not what we would have expected through five weeks of the season. But that's why we love football because it's not the same any week or any season. Uh, like you said, of course, we'll be back later this week to talk about the Cardinals in what should be a very good game. Uh, Packers are three and two, and that's what matters. And we yeah. still think that there's plenty uh, to keep them going in the right direction and a lot to be excited about. Still, Super Bowl contenders just have to you know, clean up some of the messy stuff. But that's why it's week five and not week 15. Thank you, as always, for listening to the show. You can find the podcast on Twitter at PWSS Podcast, Perry at Perry underscore Goldstein, me at Maggie J. Loney. Find that on Spotify. Like the show. Subscribe on YouTube. And check us out, share it with your friends if you like the content that we put out every week. And we'll see you later this week to talk about week six. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go.